so all done here. And we're going to use this mass both now to be able to find specific volume and afterwards here, both here and here to be able to find the total work and total heat. Okay, so specific volume. We have, um, we have, this is too thick. Okay, so we have um, the volume divided by the mass. In this case here, the volume is 1.6 and the mass is the 1.3. <clears throat> this is meters cubed. Okay, so obviously the, if the volume doubled and the mass didn't change, then specific volume has to double too, which means this is just the double the 0.71 that we found before. So that's going to be 1.44 meters cubed per kilogram. <clears throat> okay, so that's the second thermodynamic property I need for my second guy, for my second state. And now I can completely define it. Okay, so let's find out what's going on. I'm going to go to the pressure table at 300. And I'm going to look for a specific volume of 1.44. See where that falls. <clears throat> 300. 300 here. And 1.44. 1.44. So I'm going to look between these two, let's make them back, these two guys here. And I'm going to know that 1.44 is greater than my specific volume for the saturated vapor, so, right? So what I say is, okay, because, because my specific volume three is greater than specific volume of the saturated vapor, I have, I have a superheated fluid, right? So therefore I'm in the wrong table. So I'm gonna scroll down and go all the way to the superheated one. There you go, here we are. And now same thing, right? We have pressure of 350 kilopascals, and we have the specific volume of 1.44. Okay, so 300. Okay, we have 300, and we have 400 kilopascals. We don't have 350. Oh, sorry, it's 300, isn't it? Oh, it's 300, okay, my bad. So it doesn't matter, we're looking for 300, my bad. And we want the specific volume, or is it specific volume, this guy here, this column here, we're looking for 1.44. So 1.44, there is 1.49 here and 1.34 there. So our temperature that we're looking for is going to be somewhere between 600 degrees Celsius and 700 degrees Celsius. Okay, to be able to find what the actual temperature is, I need to interpolate. And what I also need to do is need to interpolate this column here, which is going to give me the internal energy, right? So I can be sure that my internal, let me just do this. 600 and 700, and just do this. Okay, cool. So I can be sure my um, internal energy for the state three is going to be between 3301 and 3479. Right, so what I'm going to do now, <clears throat> I'm just going to put the, uh, what we have is a specific volume. What we want is the temperature, and we also want the internal energy. Right, I'm not going to do it step by step because we've did several videos here talking about how to interpolate. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want something between uh, 1, 3, 4, 1, 3, 9, and 1 1.4, 9, 5, 8. And I'm looking for the 1.44, which falls between the two. Okay, this guy here is 600, this guy is 700, and then we do our interpolation, we get 663.8. <clears throat> which is T3 Celsius. And here for, let's move this zero to the side. And here for the internal energy, we have 3301.6, And then we interpolate and we get here, this is 30, oops, 34, <clears throat> 15.1. Okay, and this is kilojoules per kilograms. <clears throat> so this is the answer, right? This is the answer that we wanted for one of the things we were looking for. And the other value is the internal energy we're gonna need later on. So let's go ahead and copy these and take them up here. Where are we? Here we are, okay. So let me plug you this here. So this is T3, T3, which is one of the answers we were looking for, answer. And this guy here, this is my U3. 
Beautiful. So this guy done. We keep consistent. Good. Okay. U1 and we U3, we grabbed both already, right? So U3 is over here, all good. And then U1 is this one here, 25, 36.8. So we have both of those guys. Beautiful. So we can cross that out too. Okay, next step. Let's calculate what is the work. That's one of the things that we are uh, looking for too. So I know um, work from 2 to 3. I know it's the integral of P dv as I go from 2 to 3. Um, this happens to be the integral 2 to 3 of um, 300. Uh, 300 is a constant, so let me remove it first. So pressure is a constant, so it's going to be from 2 to 3 of dv. Okay, so the work from 2 to 3 will be pressure. This is just delta v, right? So it's just going to be v3 minus v2. And this is 300 kilopascals times 1.6 minus 0.8, correct? I'm multiplying kilopascals times meters cubed. These guys here, Pascals times meters cubed gives me joule. So I'm going to have kilojoules because I have kilopascals, right? So my answer is going to be kilojoules. So the work from 2 to 3 is simply what I get. 240 kilojoules. And that is also one of the things we were looking for. That's part of our answer right there. Okay, so we got that. Let's eliminate that one here. All right, beautiful. And the last step is finding the uh, heat. So let's think about this logically, okay? All right, let's draw our internal energy bar here. We have um, state one over here. And we know that we are going upwards. We're increasing the energy. How do I know that? Well, I'm going from 250 up to 300 kilopascals, right? So I'm increasing the pressure internally. That means I'm increasing the energy. And no work has been done whatsoever, but we have heat going in, right? Then for the next one, we also have heat going in, but we have uh, work being done, so the, the system is expanding. So the only way for me to know whether I'm going up or down is comparing the internal energy that I know went from 28, what was it? 25.36 all the way to 34.15, so I can be sure I'm going upwards in energy. Okay, so I'm going to be going from here all the way to state 3, like so. And for this to happen, heat is coming along. Yet, I'm also using some work, some work's coming out. <clears throat> so now that this heat coming in is allowing for the internal energy to increase, but also for the work to, done, to be done, so that is for the water to expand, okay? So if I wanna know what is the total heat here, I need to see what's the difference in internal energy from state three to state one, and also need to account for the work done, okay? Because the heat needs to account for these two things. So if I write the first law of thermodynamics for this problem here, I'm gonna say the heat is equal to the difference in internal energy plus the work of the water expanding, all right? So in this case, the heat for this guy here is gonna be the difference uh, between 34, 34, 15, what's it? I forget, yeah, 15.1, 34, 15.1 minus 25, 36.8, 36.8 plus the 240. And then if we check the units, We'll note that here we have kilojoules per kilograms, and over here we have kilojoules. So we can't really sum these guys up, right? So for that to happen, we need to eliminate the mass here. So I'm going to go ahead and put the mass here. Okay, so let me just put this to the right so that it makes sense. <clears throat> and the mass that we calculated was 1.13, 1.1130. Okay, and this is also kilograms. So when we do that, then we eliminate the kilograms and we can sum up the kilojoules happily. All right, so the sum here gives me um, uh, 1,217.5 kilojoules. Okay, so this guy turns out to be 977.5, and we sum up with the 240. Okay, and this is the last 
piece of the puzzle, last thing we're looking for, answer. Okay, so once again, note the heat being given to the system. You can see this clearly in this little diagram. <clears throat> and if you don't know what this is, you can check out the video in which we explore, you know, how to understand the first law better. The heat there needs to account for the change in internal energy, right? So from going from state one to state three, plus the work being done for the water to expand from the 0.8 meters cubed to the 1.6 meters cubed. So therefore, that's why we know we need to sum up the work and the internal energy to find the heat. Guys, I almost forgot about our TV PV diagram, right? So let's draw it quickly here. We were asked to do a pressure specific volume diagram. And we need to respect saturation lines. So what's gonna happen here? Well, we know that state one is a saturated vapor. So we know it needs to be somewhere in this line. You can choose anywhere you want, right? As long as we put, you know, a label for ourselves here of 250 kilopascals to indicate that we know that we're just choosing this for a reason. And then we're going to go into the situation here, right? In which we're giving heat, yet the volume cannot change whatsoever because it cannot go downwards because of the stops and it cannot go upwards because of the pressure of 300. So we're gonna expect the pressure to increase from 250 to 300 without changing the volume whatsoever. And then the situation reverses because then we have a, no change in pressure, yet we're increasing our volume. Okay, so what we need to do here is go straight upwards because then we're not moving in terms of volume, right? Straight upwards until we reach 300. And it can be wherever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and say here on the line so that's easier for me to draw. This is gonna be 300 kilopascals right here. Note that at this point here, we have a superheated fluid, right? We know that already just by looking at the PV diagram. So if you didn't wanna look in the property tables like I did, you could have just jumped straight into that conclusion. And then we're going to increase our volume all the way into here, right? So um, let me do this a bit better. Well, let's see here. Okay, so this is my state one, this is my state two, this is my state three. What else do we know? We know that over here, this guy here is 0.7, what was it? 0 0.71 something. Point, grab that one here again. Um, yeah, 0 0.71873. 71873. And over here, and over here, it's double that, so right? 1.44 approximately. Right? 1.44 approximately. So therefore, that that's what is being asked of you when you're doing this kind of, uh, let me just put the units here so there's nothing missing. All right, so this is what you're being asked is to be able to understand how to put together uh, the situation in respect to saturation lines. So again, if you didn't want to do the analysis of, you know, oh, this specific volume is beyond the saturated vapor for 300, so therefore it's a superheated fluid, you could have seen this from the start just looking at the diagram, right? Okay. If this was helpful, considering liking the video, if you have any questions, as per usual, just leave them down below in the comment section, and we'll talk soon.